Welcome back to my channel guys. If you haven't been here before, I'm Tom. I do Disney, hence the name of my channel, Tom Does Disney. We're going to go through another top 10 ride list. Today it's Epcot Center, my second favorite Walt Disney Park. Alright guys, coming in at my last spot is Nemo and Friends. Nemo Under the Sea's Adventure, whatever the heck this ride is called. I like it. But it's super short, and you can sometimes wait a while for this. There's not a lot of advanced uh, technology besides maybe those projections when you're going in through with uh, Crush and um, Crew. But yeah, it, it gets... Uh, it, it, there are two other rides that don't make this list. They are O Canada in the Canadian Pavilion and Turtle Talk with Crush. So... This ride is not as bad as those, so it takes the 10 spot, and it has that awesome song uh, in a big blue in the big blue world, which happens at the end, and you'll be humming it for the rest of the day. Okay, guys, up next at number nine is Mission Space. I do not like this ride. I've never done it with the addition of the green version, the more user-friendly version. I only ever did it before. <clears throat> I just remember it. it it didn't suit me, it didn't um, really kick my butt, and if you've watched any of these videos, you'll know that that doesn't really happen to me on rides, so when a ride does that, it automatically kind of goes towards the bottom of my list. I know a lot of people like it, so hey, more power to them. Alright, up next at number 8, The American Adventure. This is a classic show, I Love America. If you don't love America, maybe you don't love this show. Uh, it's just not as overly impressive as some of the other stage shows at Disney are. The animatronics are a bit outdated, but it, the classic nostalgia here is great for the American Pavilion. All right, coming in at number seven is Figment. Journey into the journey into your imagination with Figment. This is a cool ride. It was different when I was a kid. I I remember the Dreamfinder version of Figment, and I loved it. Um, I didn't actually ever see Journey into Your Imagination without Figment. And um, this most recent version I've ridden several times throughout several trips. Um, I, I love the character of Figment. I think he's the, Ep he's the Mickey Mouse of Epcot. And I love the song. Um, One Little Spark is incredible. If a ride can have a good song, it will definitely place higher on my list. Number six, we have Living with the Land. I love this ride, and I love Disney Dark Rides. The show scenes are great. The middle and ending with the greenhouse is phenomenal. Educational, which I think is huge. And I love um, the smell. This is another one of those rides that you're going to get that classic Disney dark ride water smell which if you don't know comes from a chemical called bromine which they use to treat the water it's not chlorine it's bromine is it bromine either way number five for me spaceship earth yes that's right it's at number five i've had enough of this ride it's classic and i love it but disney read my mind when they said they were recent recently said they were going to change this in 2020 I love the Epcot ball, but not the ride itself. Yes, it's great for education, which is usually a big plus for me, but there's an essence of like corniness in there. And I'm sure that whatever will come next, it will hold like that spirit that we love while making it more advanced, up to par with premier e-ticket attractions like the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride. So that's my two cents about Spaceship Earth, which is my number five. Number four, Test Track. This is an awesome ride. I love it, and I can't say any more about it. I truly, truly think it's incredible. The rewritability with being able to customize your, your cars. Um, the indoor part is phenomenal. The outside section super fast, super enjoyable. You get good views of the Guardians of the Galaxy construction, too. Next time you guys are coming out of that first little drop after the indoor section take a look off to your uh, uh take a look off to your left and you'll see that new guardians building and maybe the best view you can get of it in all of the parks so with only three spots left you're probably thinking you know two of them for sure if you're a disney fan but do you know number three i'll give you a couple seconds and if you guess it 
in the comments below with me having no way of knowing whether you watched it ahead or not, take a guess right now. Pause this, comment below. Did you get it right? Number three is Grand Fiesta Mexico Tour, duh. I love the Three Caballeros. They are the best, and people who don't like this ride are nuts. It has, A, one of the coolest Disney elements you could have, which is the in the ride, let's start at the top, it's a Disney dark ride. I love it. It goes past an indoor restaurant. Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland does the same thing, and to eat at the Blue Bayou, which is that restaurant, it's comparable, I believe, not being a Disneyland expert, it's comparable to getting reservations for things like Cinderella's Castle, uh, her table, character meal, Be Our Guest, California Grill, Tiffin's at Animal Kingdom, all these really impressive places. So, yeah, the Grand Fiesta Mexico Tour has that, and then at the end, that fireworks show with the, with the three, uh, with those guys singing that song, I... You could, if I got stuck right there, ever, Disney, do me a favor. Get me stuck at that part. If, you, get, if you're a cast member and you see this video, just stick me there one day for five minutes. <laughs> it would be one of my dreams come true. Up next at number two, Soarin' Round the World. This used to be Soarin' Over California, and I loved it just as much then as I do now. This could easily be my number one ride. And uh, to be honest with you, the smells alone that you get from each, flying over each one of those countries and that feeling of being able to, this is a Disney hack, folks. If you're like me and you wear flip-flops to Disney at reasonable times of the year, you can take your flip-flops off, put them a little bit ahead of you before the thing takes off, and you can kick through your feet, just bare feet. It's like, ah. Uh, it's the little things at Disney that really make it for hardcore fans, I think. Because you do these rides so many times, when you add extra elements of it that make you feel like you're hacking the system, it's great. I'm always afraid that I'm going to get back down there and a cast member is going to have hidden my flip-flop somewhere. Please, if you're a cast member watching this video, stick me on the Grand Fiesta Tour for five minutes and please don't steal my flip-flops while I'm on Soarin'. Number one, it's Frozen Ever After. This ride is amazing. These animatronics are on another level. Uh, I don't think they're as cool as traditional, non-projected animatronics. Um, the music from Frozen hits me really well, like in the Disney feels. So riding through that and getting little new numbers and reversions of versions of the songs in the movie, if that sentence even made sense. And Elsa, when she's just like, let it go and send you back down that hill. This is a huge achievement for Disney, and uh, I could ride this ride three or four times easily. So guys, same as always, what did you think of my list? Was it the same as your list? Comment down below. Uh, put your rides from worst to best, and see if you can start a conversation. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate all your support. Follow me on Instagram as well, at TomDoesDisney. And I promise that very soon we're going to get this white wall filled up back here. Have a magical day. Thanks for watching.